A while ago, friends of mine uh, came up to visit from the UK and that time ecstasy was a big hype and they told us about it, they told us it was a non-addictive drug, you know, this was known as the love drug and we tried it and that's how it all started yeah, and it progressed from there. At that time when we just started taking ecstasy, it was, it was very expensive, it was like more than 100 and a pill. So in order for me to support my habit, I started selling the ecstasy in the club. Through that, I made contacts with some uh, Nigerian drug dealers. And from there on, they introduced me to cocaine. Uh, I started selling cocaine and I realized that cocaine was actually good money to sell. And I sold cocaine and through selling it, I tried it. And it gave me an even better high. It made me very confident. Eventually, the cocaine habit became so expensive that and also it was, it was tiring on the body. I was staying out of work. Um, I was selling it more and more now to, 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 to cover costs from what I used. So I was constantly paying off debt, you know. Um, I wasn't getting full salaries. And then eventually it led to me suffering badly from insomnia because it keeps you awake. And through that insomnia, one of the Nigerian, one of my Nigerian friends introduced me to heroin and told me that it will help me sleep. You know, and really it did. And that's how I became addicted to heroin. And then it wasn't long before I was actually injecting it. Everything was falling apart. I'd lost my job. Um, I was having problems at home with my family, um, with my girlfriend at the time that we were together for nine years. She eventually left. Um, then I decided I, I'd lost every single thing that I had. Um, I wasn't feeling like a human being anymore. People didn't trust me anymore. I was robbing and stealing to support my habit. And eventually I thought, you know what, enough is enough, man. I really need to stop this. And I asked for help. And I was actually detoxed at a priest's house in Amtata on here when I went cold turkey. And it was the most horrible feeling I'd ever experienced. Um, I had hallucinations, I missed myself. Um, I got really, really sick. I stayed there, I came out, I was feeling really good, put on weight, I was looking good again. Um, my cousin offered me a job in Durban, you know, um, during that time I was doing really well. I stayed clean for almost three and a half years, almost three years I stayed clean. And one night in the club, having a beer with friends, I was exposed to coke all over again and I relapsed. And when I relapsed that night, I actually picked up exactly where I left off. Uh, started robbing, got really, really serious into like doing armed robberies and uh, robbing people. In that time as well, I went over to Peru for Nigerian drug loads. I went to fetch drugs there. A friend of mine was also arrested on her way back. Uh, she recently came out of prison. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones, I think maybe because of the quantity that I brought into the country. Yeah, and you know, with, with every relapse, it just came, the, the, the lifestyle around it just got worse and worse. Um, every time I robbed more, I carried a gun, um, I'd been shot through my neck in my sleep, um, I'd shot a person myself. Uh, we were going all over robbing, robbing people, robbing shops, you know, just, um, just to feed my habit basically. A turning point in my life was when my mother said to me that she would prefer it if I died rather than to, to see me doing this to myself and at least if I was dead she would know where I am. And that like really hit home for me. That's when I realized how dark my lifestyle actually was. And I had nothing, nothing to show for my life.